Titanic is uh, one of the pivotal moments in modern shipbuilding industry. So much has changed as a direct result of the Titanic disaster. What are some of the main examples of that? Uh, one of the, uh, the first things that most people should be uh, familiar with is the uh, safety of life at sea, or SOLAS regulations. That is a direct result of the sinking of the Titanic. And uh, can you give me some examples of, uh, in terms of design, what has changed or, or what changes were brought about to uh, ships? As the Titanic started to sink and, and the bow was going down, the water would uh, uh, go over the top of the bulkhead and uh, flood that compartment and then proceed over the top of that bulkhead and flood the next compartment and so on. And the, we call that progressive flooding. Modern ships are built such that the bulkheads extend all the way up to what's called the bulkhead deck. Most ships, that's the main deck. And uh, that prevents this progressive flooding from occurring. And that is one of the direct results of the Titanic disaster. When you look at the uh, Titanic design, I'm, I'm assuming that you know a person with your background has an interest in, in the way that was built. Was there anything else that stands out for you as, you know, you kind of look back and think, I, I can't believe they built that that way. Actually, just the opposite. The Titanic was designed uh, in excess of the, of the regulations at the time. She was actually built to exceed the current regulations, which is actually quite amazing because it costs a lot more money for the, uh, the, the ship owners to do this. Their intent was to p prepare or produce a very safe ship. They did that, but there were some flaws in the materials that were selected that we didn't know about until they actually found the Titanic. And there were some operational issues uh, that occurred, which I can't get into. Mm -hmm. Even though they, they did exceed the expectations of the time, what, what were you, some of those other flaws that you think? Uh... Uh, some, well, uh, one, some of the flaws were in the material selection was the fact that the steel that they used had too much uh, carbon. Uh, this made the steel brittle, especially in operations in the, the cold North Atlantic waters. So when she actually hit the ice, iceberg, the steel cracked and the crack propagated throughout the steel itself. It also sheared off some of the heads of the rivets because the rivets were made of the same steel quality. We now know about the materials, the composition that we use uh, is such that we grade the steel, it's produced in a quality environment and it, it's, it resists crack propagation. Um, it's interesting that you mentioned uh, how uh, the Titanic was for its time in engineering feat because I think we tend to in modern times look back and think uh, you know that do you think I'm, what I'm trying to get at is do you think the Titanic maybe gets a bit of a bad rap because you know we look back at it and think oh they tried to do something that you know was impossible and, and you know no not at all I think the Titanic was ahead of the time at the time she did exceed the regulations. She did have a lot of safety features that other ships did not. The ship owners decided to pay the extra money and go and exceed the regulations at the time. They were, their intent was to produce a safer ship. She did carry more lifeboats than were required. Although she didn't carry enough, she did carry more than the regulations uh, said that she should. They did attempt to do the pro compartmentalization. It's just that they didn't extend the bulkheads high enough up to prevent the progressive flooding. But they did have progressive flooding, or they did have compartmentalization in mind when they designed her. That was a giant leap forward in shipbuilding in, in, in terms of the, the design aspects of it. So there was still, that was really ahead of its time quite a bit, like it was kind of a technological marvel in a it, sense. It was, it was a very modern ship at the time, yes. How important is the Titanic sort of, uh, you know, for a naval architect, is it still is, is it something that people still look back at in, in your profession and say... Oh my, yes. Uh, the Titanic is very relevant in shipbuilding. Uh, we teach a lot of courses here at the Marine Institute. We talk about the Titanic and many of them in terms of the, uh, the operation of the vessel, the design and the construction and materials. It's, the, it's a, an amazing example of how to build ships and how not to build ships all in, all in, one, all in one vessel, basically. Um, I don't know if you know much at the time, but I mean, how much planning went into something like that? I mean, you're kind of creating something brand new that sort of exceeded. They spent uh, many years designing this vessel. They had the concept uh, based on some similar vessels that they wanted, but they wanted to have something that they could market to uh, for their company to make a lot of money, of course. Um, so they uh, put a lot of time and effort into designing this vessel that was larger than any competitors. 
The design itself is similar to some smaller vessels, so they scale up their design and then made the appropriate changes in terms of the structure and uh, to make sure that she could handle it.